Hey, what is going on YouTube? Hey, hey, Ron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are in the Mines CE. The original Mines that everybody knows is pretty much broken in all regards, and we decided to put an Epic mod on this thing. Now, I've got a question to propose to you guys. Do you think that the Epic slash Legendary mods are a little much? I personally don't think so. I think it makes the game a tad bit more interesting, but uh, this game in the mains here turns absolutely disgusting with, with the reload and just the, the DPM output that you can get out of these mods. I almost want to put a disclaimer on this video for my Battleship mains because uh, this is pretty much everything you guys hate about the HE spam. I do have a video, however, coming out how to counter the HE spam, and if you find yourself continually getting HE spammed, well, I hate to break it to you, but you're probably not a great Battleship player. Uh, now, it happens to everyone. It is very frustrating, but there are absolutely things you can do, starting with your builds and your commander selection and your legendary perk you know, selection to, to help mitigate the, the fire spam. Um, but here we're getting in this defensive position in the mines, and we are running uh, beyond, I think, just like the most toxic HE spam build that you can run, which brings me to kind of the point of this video. And I think that the, the legendary or epic mods could be adjusted for the high spam cruisers. I think that if you go based off of the reload, right, the mines already has like a four or five second reload, um, and you make it shell hits per reload, right? So battleships are not affected. You know, if, if you have a long reload, it's only, what, 10 shell hits. But if you have a very fast reload, then it's, you know, uh, you know, 50 or uh, 60 or 75 or something like that. Uh, I think Wargaming did a decent job on making it damage-based, right? Because you could get one salvo from Montana and get your first, you know, plotting room or whatever mod you want to put on there. They could also change the, the damage part of it to make it, you know, not fire damage. Now, that would ruin you know, certain ships in, in terms of getting their modifications, but, you know, no, no battleship players like the HE spam. But that being said, a lot of battleship players, such as a few in this game, um, do sit in the back and just let it happen, right? If you will notice, I'm having a very difficult time hitting this Brandenburg. I'm basically just trying to abuse auto him here. And we're still getting a few hits, but because that Brandenburg put himself in a position, you know, close to that island, he is not getting as, you know, abused as the Nagato here or the Flander in the back of this map, right? So a lot of it has to do with your positioning as as a battleship and and, you know, trying to put yourself in a spot to not get spammed, but also shoot back, right? And that is one of the most difficult things in this game. Um, I was playing with a, a lot of members this weekend and just noticing a lot of things, and I, I think I hold my members to a, a higher standard because I know that they watch me, but just sometimes looking at positions and, and reading the map and different things like that, right? You, you want to, to put yourself in a spot where your team is not, right? This defensive position right here, because we were in this position, instead of just sitting broadside or behind an island, we were able to turn our guns, quickly kill that Benham who was trying to rush our flank, but also dodge a salvo without even really paying attention to the salvo. You guys see me use overview camera often, and part of that reason is to see incoming shells. The other day I got a new monitor and we're still playing with the brightness and the contrast and I <laughs> um, didn't see some incoming shells and, and took a, a nasty salvo, right? So part of the reason, you know, that a lot of cruiser mains or, or people do this this overview or this this view here is to see you know incoming shells you also get a better view of the battle so you can see what's going on around you right a huge part of the game a massive part of becoming a better player is looking at the mini map right um, overview camera aside mini the mini map and and spatial you know uh, awareness is is key paying attention to your position as well as your team's position I think that's a lot of you know, a secondary part of looking at the minimap is is looking at your team's position. They may, you know, you may have positioned well, but if your team and their lack of brain cells decides to clump up next to you or go off in a different direction, you know, you just think of soccer, right, or, or, or football or whatever, you know, analogy you'd like to use in a zone defense, okay? So that zone defense, if one side, you know, if somebody goes out to block the three, somebody has to fill in that passing lane, right? It's, 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 the same thing that, you know, in soccer and football, et cetera, whatever sports analogy you want to use, goes for legends. So if our team on the on the left there at A collapses, we either need to fill in that gap or push through to the other side. You basically never want a massive hole, essentially, in your zone. And I hope you guys understand that analogy. Now, it doesn't always work like that. Sometimes your team just folds, and sometimes the enemy team just folds. For example, the enemy Benham, uh, who rushed into us, gave his team a massive disadvantage. Uh, on top of that, we killed their cruiser on the right, and now their ships are 
are basically trapped behind A and B here with us, you know, maintaining all three of these cap advantages. So by, by you know, not playing your ship like a silly goose and rushing in, you, you will usually give your team a, a chance to reposition. And it's, there are so many different, you know, ways to play right you can play super aggressive if you have an aggressive team if you don't have an aggressive team like most of the games that go on in legends then you have to play a little bit more passive some people are like allergic to just you know taking you know a, a slow approach a slow methodical approach to the game that it's it's almost frustrating right it's like hey let's die as quickly as possible uh, and that seems you know that seemed to be the enemy approach here but because of our positioning right we have positioned ourselves almost perfectly in the middle of the map here utilizing island cover we've gotten 80k for free uh, on top of that, we have double ticked our, our epic mod, so we now have times two reload. And yeah, I, I think that this might be a touch broken. That being said, go out and have some fun with it, right? We we absolutely smashed this this enemy team, and it is fun sometimes. But some people play ships like the Mines and the Kamikaze like it's their religion, you know. And they sometimes they they blame other people for their lack of skill, right? It's the same people who turn off crossplay. It's like, oh, I turn off crossplay because I don't want to play with the other console, and the other console is the reason that I'm bad. But uh, <laughs> that's for another video. Here we're positioning ourselves again. We are utilizing that, that trick, right? Just slowly ticking our nose around this island cover. We're not detected here, but we are still able to shoot this Brandenburg. Now we're getting a bunch of shatters, and we're honestly missing a bunch of shells. But here I think we tick a, a triple fire, and we've already ticked the triple bonus on that epic mod so if his team would have been far more aggressive he could have pushed me right but his team is sitting in the back like we talked about playing passive uh is we just i just mentioned it right sometimes people rush in but sometimes people play like this flounder and there's nothing he can do except for back up and and, and be on fire <laughs> so if he were to play a touch more aggressive support his team there now that being said i think the plymouth or another one of these guys came into chat uh, and said ggs their team failed them you know horrifically there was nothing they could do in the mid. Their team on C lost right away, um, and which allowed me to move up here. And you can see Peak and uh, the other players are on the right there. So I will say this Plymouth does get a little bit lucky as we tick the wither, you know, halfway into this game. That's honestly kind of a slow wither for me. <laughs> uh, the Wooster and a few other ships really, uh, you know, can, can uh, the, the three and four and five minute withers are honestly really fun to get uh, right off the rip. But I think a lot more players are using fight fire with fire. And again, we will have a video coming out about fire spam. So if you find yourself constantly getting fire spammed, then, then yeah, I would reposition or think about, you know, better in your play because uh, I've been playing a lot more battleships recently and I have yet to to die to, to fire spam. I have been fire spammed and I had had to reposition as we get the high caliber there. But if you're constantly getting fire spammed and constantly complaining about it, then yes, you're, you're probably not uh, the best battleship player and you're probably not positioning well. Here was a little bit of a tricky situation. This Nagato came out here, and this Mines, or I'm sorry, this uh, Plymouth actually was getting some nice salvos on us. Like I said earlier, I don't know how that guy didn't get obliterated. We only got one Citadel on him. Uh, <laughs> honestly, HE is just the shell choice, you know, to, to always use, right? Sometimes those overpens, I mean, I may have been aiming a touch high. He was turning but uh, those overpins can be rather frustrating. I wanted to go for the double strike here, and we actually end up getting neither of them. Peak took the Nagato here, uh, and I was shooting this Plymouth, and then <laughs> the Italian destroyer there gets gets the kill on that. But down goes Peak, right? Clearly the better content creator is is right here. No, this this was the same stream he had his Georgia game. So, that, And that's honestly part of the reason I don't play in divisions too much anymore. I mean, I do on the weekends, obviously, with you guys. We just had a lot of fun in Tier 2. Um, but that's more for my members. You know, playing with, with Peak and, and, and Bravo and those guys, like, it's a lot of fun. We dominate, but we always dominate, right? So I've been having a lot more fun trying to play solo. We, there was a frustrating night the other night, but uh, that, that is the game, right? And when you're, play, when you're constantly playing, like, in a division like this, I actually end up losing out on XP, right? I probably could have gotten so much more XP if I was solo in this game. But we are already up to 185,000. 
And uh, there, there's still a few ships left to, to, to melt in this game. Now, if we did have the epic mod, or I'm sorry, the legendary mod, we would have been doing even more damage. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> it's These mods are absolutely, you know, they're, they're a lot of fun, but at the same time, I, I think ships like the Mines and a few others could could use from some balancing factors in, in some regard or another. And, and Wargaming has said that they, you know, if they become too strong or too powerful, they will change. Here, I, I'm shooting at the Z-23, and I wish I had my Hydro. He would have, not now, but he would have been detected for a good portion of it. But he actually shot on the far side here. We dodge his widespread torpedoes. Uh, just playing a little bit risky, but the game is essentially over at this point. We have 900 points uh, to their 200. So it just goes to show, play the objective, right? Don't rush in. And we all know we're, you're going to get games like this. The other the other night I I had the, I think it was a game in the Burgone trying to show, you know, how much I like the Burgone and the game was over in the first three minutes. All, all three of our destroyers died in the first three minutes. One of the, the enemy destroyers came in. It's like, hey, sorry for uh, killing all your DDs. <laughs> so, you know, we all get games like that. Sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles, though. You get on the, the team who just doesn't, you know, the, you could get eight kills and you would need nine with some of these teams. Here, though, we have this King George. He is broadside. We've got the AP out. You know, selecting the right ammo choice is is seems to be the, you know, the right thing to do. But honestly, more, I just want to shoot HE because like we saw with that Plymouth as we tick the Confederate there and angle into the King George and take... 2,000 or 4,000 damage. It just seems that uh, HE is, is the more potent ammo choice. I wasn't paying attention to the clock here, and there were still actually three ships left. So 232,000 is all we're going to get. But uh, you can see, I was like, no, there's more damage on the board. Um, an absolutely dominating win in the one of the most OP ships at the tier, the mines. Nearly 3,600, 3,559 there with 230,000. Wither, no arsonist, but we got a Confederate and a high caliber. So uh, just a pretty nutty game with that mod. You guys let me know. Are the mods too much? Uh, or is it just a lack of, of enemy situational awareness allowing us to, to be, you know, to abuse these mods? So I will leave that uh, for you guys in the comments down below. But there is my minds with the epic mod. So hope you guys have a great day. Let me know what you think. Aaron out. Peace.